So we talked about our primary correction. So that's what this first node is going to be. I'm going to use the lift gamma and gain tools to bring up the highlights. And we don't want to bring this too far because his skin is the brightest thing in this image, just based on the way that I lit it. Oh. And we're going to bring the darks down a little bit. We're not going to go overboard because we do want to see some of the texture of these seats. Just bring it some more. And now I'm going to add in some saturation. I'm really trying not to use my wave panel because I want you to see it on the screen. So that's looking pretty good. You can also see that it's quite noisy um, in the shadows. I'll just zoom in here. I'm going to turn off the timeline. You're getting some noise here. So if you pay for resolve, you can use the temporal noise reduction and just bring this up a bit until it starts to look a little better. Actually, I'm going to do this in a new node. Add node, add serial. These are all serial nodes. It's a good idea to put noise reduction on its own node because it can be pretty CPU intensive. So you can turn it on and off as needed. So what are some things we can do here to take this even further? I'm going to add a new node, node, and I'm going to use the qualifier. This is our tool for picking a specific color out and just affecting that color. Now you can press this button. I like to hit shift H and you can see what it is that you're selecting. And you can use some of these tools to really dial that in. If you're just downloading Resolve now, it'll probably look a little different because they just changed the qualifier tool a little bit. Um, I had to use an older version of Resolve to get some of these older projects in. Um, is what it is, but it's mostly the same, but that's just something to keep um, keep in mind. So I like to really crank the blur and I don't see denoise here, which is on a newer version of Resolve, but that's a good tool as well. And you just want to play it through. You can see a lot of this noise happening and that's not good. So I'm just going to keep blurring it. I'm going to clean black a little bit, which is just affecting what's gray and kind of cleaning that up. And that's looking a bit better. I think we can actually even get away with that. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm just going to bring down the gamma in the skin tones, which really gives it a lot of uh, depth. It makes it feel more contrasty when it's not necessarily more contrasty. And that's starting to feel pretty good. Um, if my key wasn't very good, I can also add a power window that really um, just l only affects what's in this circle or everything outside of the circle, depending on what you select here. So I'm going to make it a bit softer and then I'm going to use my tracking tool, my tracker to track this throughout the scene. It's a very powerful tool. Um, there are ways to track frame by frame that um, I'm going to show you right now because it's not wanting to track past this point. And you just hit this frame button. It's already, there's already key or frame, keyframe here. I'm just going to bring that that way and just move it. And now we have another keyframe. And I'm just going to move this where he sort of ended up there. Now that's pretty good. Not the most beautiful thing in the world, but because it's so soft, I don't think anyone's going to notice. Uh, and now we're making sure none of this key goes, spills out of this power window. From here, I can do another correction and I'm just going to copy this node 
I'm just hitting control C. I'm going to make a new node. I'm going to paste. So that just copies and pastes everything, but I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. I'm going to keep I'm going to get rid of my key. Actually, I'm going to keep my key, but I'm going to hit invert. And I'll show you what that does. It just hits opposite. And I'm going to go to my window and I'm going to select outside. And now everything outside of this window is going to be affected while nothing inside will be. And now reaching for my panels, don't do it. I'm going to add a bit more contrast to the background without affecting his face. And we can take a look at how this is looking with and without this adjustment. That's without, that's with. Now, I don't like that this is on his shirt, so I'm actually going to make another power window. And I'm going to bring this here. I'm going to make it soft. I'm going to select this button here, and that removes that from the equation as well. I'm just going to track it. All right, and now we can see that his shirt is not affected as much anymore either. Now, one thing I neglected to do is my primary correction for white balance, and I can see now that it's off. So <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. So I'm just going to push this towards the warm and make sure these on my RGB parade are lined up. So that makes it white. And I've got to fix up this key because as we know, this node affects this node. So just change the colors of my key, which normally I would just make a node outside of it and do it that deal with it that way. But um, it's not gonna, that would, that would be a way to work around changing these nodes uh, and having to redo these keys, but um, that's all right. Okay, and that is a really good first run of this uh, of this shot. Okay, moving along. Now I can copy the screen over, but it's going to be a little different because this was a completely different theater. So I'm going to take this. It's actually in a pretty good place. Uh, I'm going to drag it. I'm going to make it smaller. Try that. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just retract this. I'm going to lift this up here and make it more along the lines of the shape of his shirt. You're really thinking broad strokes when it comes to power windows for the most part. Our white balance is looking pretty good, but I want to make his face a little brighter. So I'm just going to pull up the gain. I'm going to pull down the gamma just to give it some more contrast and texture and um, depth. I'm going to look at this clip. I think he needs more gain here, just to match. And his skin's actually looking a little yellow now that I'm looking at it a little closer. So I'm going to uh, adjust the gamma and just bring it towards the opposite side of the color wheel for that and adjust that. So you can see what this node is doing on its own. Now these are looking a bit better. I'm going to adjust the seats to make them a little less yellow as well. And those are looking pretty right on. They're looking just about the same. All right, so we've got these two clips pretty close. They're looking pretty good. If I play them, we're not. And I'm the executive director. Just going to turn off the audio here. And those are looking right on.